The more one thinks about the Whitlam era at this distance of time and in the light of later events, the more the larger questions seem to multiply. What can we learn from an era in which the leader of an avowedly innovative government is viewed as a kind of messiah and therefore takes it upon himself to be constantly active in pressing for change and keeping the media fascinated? Will the frenetic pace inherent in such a role lead eventually to increasing dysfunction as the leader and those around him, seduced by their own rhetoric, substitute feints and gestures for real action? Can a work of fiction, by taking liberties not available to the conscientious journalist, by exploring ambiguities or magnifying certain features of the scene, draw attention to ill-advised adventures or assist the average punter to identify an ideologue? Questions of this kind can't be taken lightly or dismissed as a mere literary conceit for we have witnessed the downward spiral in Australian politics from the activism of a leader in the Whitlam era, where new policy showed a clear sense of purpose, to the vacuous repartee of the Rudd regime, so ably satirised by the TV series The Hollow Men, in which it seemed every soft shoe shuffle was choreographed to suit the vagaries of the daily media cycle, and every sugar-coated grin, promising much but delivering little, left the Prime Minister of the day looking like a celebrity chef <laughs> or an impresario from Vaudeville, promoting the acrobats and jugglers and chorus line of cousins waiting in the wings as universally acclaimed working families, whatever that means. It is apparent from the works of writers in other countries, such as Arthur Kersler or, or Albert Camus or George Orwell, that the novel can be used to discern and convey certain truths about politics of a time and place that stay with the reader due to the singularity of the viewpoint. J.M. Kurtz's novel, Waiting for the Barbarians, in its central metaphor exposed the folly of the apartheid regime in South Africa by suggesting that the guardians protecting his unnamed empire from external threats were barbarians themselves.